she received help from a friend, Alexander Graham Bell, now best known as the creator of the telephone, then a leader in deaf education. That's what he saw as his mission in life, in particular teaching of speech uh, and oral communication. He was a public advocate uh, for the uh, suppression of sign language in the schools and for the teaching of oral skills in schools. Oralism in general, I think, has a very oppressive quality to it. Because what oralism is predicated on is the idea that the only way to communicate effectively is being able to speak. Speech teaching was a central part of Bell's life. And he married a deaf woman, Mabel Bell, who was also a public advocate for the oral method. When Bell learned Helen was speaking, he went to Perkins and spelled questions into her hands. Do you know what a cloud is? Rain. What is wind? It is wild air. What is thought? When we make a mistake, we say, I thought it was right. Where is your thought? Mind. My head is full of mind. That part of Helen Keller's story, I learned later in my life. When I discovered that, from a modern lens, from a contemporary lens, even though I was young, I was a little disappointed. I was disappointed. Because it meant that sign language communication was something to be discarded, not something interesting to be encouraged or supported. So as I was growing up and finding my own deaf identity, I couldn't really relate. For that time, and who she was around, and how she was raised, I think the choice to assimilate more with her hearing peers and those in her environment, I get it. I get it. 